The city of Acre. Nearly 21 years have I ridden with Saladin. When word of the Saracen victory at Jerusalem reached Europe, another crusade was launched. The kings of the three most powerful nations in Europe, England, France, and the Holy Roman Empire, embarked for the Holy Land with thousands of troops. Saladin knows that his most dangerous opponent is Richard the Lionheart of England, a brilliant tactician who learned the art of war fighting against his own father. He builds colossal fortresses and always fights in the front lines. Ideal for heroic war. Richard's army has come ashore near Accra. Much of Saladin's army is trapped in the city, while two monstrous English traditions pound in Accra's borders. If Richard can defeat our army, we can walk into Jerusalem. Saladin knows that this is the climax of his jihad. All of the Crusader states have fallen. If the Saracens can hold Accra, then the Europeans will be forced to return home. If Accra falls, then the centuries-long nightmare of eternal war, raid and counter-raid, begin again. All of Saladin's victories will be for nothing. Let us show the infidel dogs of the West a sight the likes of which no son of Europe has ever seen. مساعد مستعد بناء مستعد عاملكم عامل منجا عمرو شو تحكي الهجوم نعم حسنا
أمر صحيح
year of my freedom. The fighting is over. The fire has gone out of Richard's lust for conquest. The two respected adversaries have begun to speak, finally, of peace. War is not gentle with men's health. Richard fell ill with a fever. Because he respected his enemy, Saladin sent Richard fruit and mountain snow to comfort him. Soon enough, Richard boarded a ship headed back to England. The Third Crusade is over. The final treaty was signed on September the 2nd, 1192. By its terms, Jerusalem remains in Saracen hands, but Christian pilgrims to be allowed to visit all the holy places freely and safely. It seems a fitting compromise to a war that has been fought over religion and land. The war is over, but I do not think I shall ever set foot in Normandy again. I want to see the steel foundries in Damascus, and the gardens of the Caliph in Baghdad. I've never seen the mighty crack the Chevalier, now fallen fortress of the Knights Hospital. The Holy Land has many wondrous sights, and I can spend a lifetime here. It is peace in the Holy Land, for the moment. Sadly, in a land so small, home to so many different cultures, birthplace of three of the world's great religions, I suspect that blood may one day stain the sand again. 